Xavier Tellier. Good afternoon. And uh, he will speak about patterns uh, on grid shells without geometrical torsions at nodes. Yes, thank you. So this is a, a joint work with uh, Roman Boutillier and Cyril Dutz that I'm going to tell you about today. Uh, we're going to look into uh, patterns for which shells, the one that uh, allow to deal efficiently with geometrical torsion. And what I mean by geometrical torsion is the fact that as you are trying to, uh, to, draw, um, to make a beam follow a, a curved surface, the normal vector of the surface follows, uh, undergoes twisting along this line. And in this is uh, the, the cause of uh, many fabrication issues, issues that make the fabrication of grid shells quite complex. So there are usually three main strategies that are used to, uh, to deal with torsion in a curved uh, grid shell. The first one will be to uh, try to accommodate the torsion in beams or in nodes. So constraining always the beams to be parallel to the, to the surface. So that we mean like twisting it and twisting can be like uh, really costly, like this is uh, like a Shigeru Bans uh, Pompidou in, uh, in Metz. Um, this is done quite quickly, uh, easily if you are using circular profiles, profiles, but then you have problems connecting your circular profiles to, uh, to other structural layers. And the last solution is to concentrate the torsion in the nodes if you are using straight beams. But then you end up with this, this kind of very complex connection nodes with, uh, that are like time consuming and very costly. A second solution to deal with torsion is to set all beams in a vertical plane. And that way there is no problem with torsion, but then you end up with high angles between your beams and your surface. And you may have like architectural problems like blocking light, pore resistance to wind, and, uh, and kink angles between your panels and the surface. So a third strategy is to try to get the, the, the best out of the two first ones by using optimization. Optimization, they are optimizing the orientation of your axis to obtain torsion-free nodes while uh, aligning your beams with the surface normals. And this, you know that you can get it uh, to, converge, to converge quite well if you are using quadrangular meshes that are aligned with principal curvature directions or planar hexagonal, uh, hexagonal meshes. But what about other patterns? Well, that's the topic of, uh, of work. The starting point is uh, differential geometry. Basically, we look uh, at what happens to the normal vector. Uh, like for example, here, the normal at, at P as you move uh, away on a surface. And basically, we look at, uh, uh, we linearize the problem in the neighborhood of, of a point using the, the, the Gauss map, like a well-known tool for uh, of differential geometry. I won't go more into the details of this. I will just show you the results of this, uh, of using these methods. We came up with uh, three properties that are sufficient to guarantee that a pattern for a grid shell can have like no torsion and with a, and a very limited deviation of the, of the section with the, the surface normals. The first condition is that the pattern should be periodic in two orthogonal directions. So that is, there is a rectangular primitive cell that you can just copy and translate to recreate the, the entire mesh. Second condition, there should be a parallel transformation that allows an elongation of this rectangle. And uh, what I mean by parallel transformation is a transformation that modifies the length of each beam, but that do not change their orientation. So if we follow this line as we are applying the transformation, it always keeps the same orientation. And last rule, this primitive rectangle should be always aligned with principal curvature directions on the surface. And there's a lot of patterns that actually fulfill these first two, uh, two sets of rules. Like you can see five of them here. There are many more. So you can see at the bottom how the primitive rectangular cell can be deformed by using these parallel transformations. And finally, a counter example here, this one, the primitive cell is rectangular, but the only parallel transformation we'll find are chromatices that will scale things up and, uh, and the laterally at the same time. So this one does not fulfill the rule. So this we obtained from differential geometry, looking at the neighborhood of a point. What happens if we look at a global surface? Well, to validate this, we performed uh, some case studies. So the first one is, uh, is this one. We are comparing two patterns. The, the top one fulfills the three sets of rules that we just defined before. And the one below does not, uh, but it has the same average orientation of beams and the exact same combinatorics. And now what we do next is putting this pattern 
on a CERN to reference surfaces, optimizing the orientation of the axis to, to, to make them torsion free and see how much this optimization make the beams deviate from the, the surface normal. And we can see that with the pattern fulfilling the wound, we have an average of five degrees of deviation with the pattern that fulfills the wound. And with the, the other one that is very similar, that, that does not fulfill its uh, right, well, we have a deviation three times higher. And things are even uh, uh, more, um, there's an even more difference with these two patterns here. On the, on the top left, you can see uh, a pattern created from uh, hexagons and, uh, and uh, triangles. The bottom left is the one-known Kagome pattern. So we have the exact same uh, number of faces at the same time, uh, two triangles for one hexagon, except the top left fulfills the wood, bottom left does not. And now if you look, if you, again, if we minimize the torsion on uh, those reference patterns, you can see that we have a deviation of the, the, the beams from the surface normals, like uh, eight times and 10 times higher with the Kagome pattern that does not fulfill the wood. Well, so uh, I will end on this uh, concluding uh, example. We, uh, tried to, we, we created the geometry of the Gate Shed uh, Sage Music Center by our foster and partners. Uh, and uh, by putting on it this, um, this pattern composed of uh, hexagons, squares, and triangles that does fulfill the wall. And we managed to get this pattern with uh, that is torsion free here with just a 0 0.5 degree tolerance. And where the beams always stay within two degrees of the, of the normals. So I thank you for your attention and I would be glad to take questions if there are any. I've not seen any popping up on my screen. Thank you, Xavier. Uh, if there are no questions, I just have a curiosity. So with respect to the also Andrea. the- Andrea. Uh, yes. Ah. yes, go ahead first so then I will ask my- no, it's okay. So you can go uh, because we are a little bit short in time. So I prefer you made the question. And uh, okay. so, can you uh, tell uh, it go into detail on slide six uh, or slide, six. Ooh, slide eight? Uh, maybe slide five. Uh, yes, uh, six. Six. Uh, why the bottom uh, grid doesn't satisfy the rules, or which rule doesn't satisfy? Uh, this the bottom one does not fulfill it because uh, it is not aligned with principal curvature directions. Ah, okay, I see. It's a uh, light uh, idea, but um, you see it has the same average deviation from curvature uh, principal curvature directions from the one above. But uh, here we voluntarily not uh, did not align it with. Uh, While the one on top, uh, you can align it with the print. The, the unit cell uh, can be aligned with the principal curvature. Yeah, yes. In each case, like we aligned, uh, like uh, that's why I showed uh, the, the these little arrows in blues. Uh, they show how we are oriented, how this is mapped to the surface. Yeah, because really. I didn't see the, the cell. I, I thought you can make a similar cell in the bottom one, but okay. okay. Yeah, that was to compare apple to apple patterns with uh, similar orientation, similar combinatorics. Thank you. That's another question from Francesco Tornabene. Yes. Uh, thank you very much for your nice presentation. I have a question about uh, the modeling uh, of the shells. So uh, you uh, homogenize uh, the structure, so you find uh, an equivalent material or you study directly the system of beams? Oh, this is purely geometrical. There is no mechanical uh, consideration in this study. We are just like taking a reference surface, optimizing the geometry. So optimizing the orientation of the of the beams on the on the surface to try to minimize the to minimize the torsion to get all the, the torsion everywhere below like a 0 0.5 degree uh, tolerance and then okay. we... and after you obtain this minim this minimization in order to evaluate the stresses and other things you have a, a model to homogenize the structure or um, so I mean not yet uh, I mean this. This is like the or, 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 or we have to um, when you have find the optimal uh, distribution of the beam, okay? But uh, um, you st you can study the structure as a system of beams, or you can propose uh, an homogenization to consider the structure as a continuum shells. So this is um, okay. So you understand. Yeah, yes. And uh, yeah, my answer to you is that, uh, yeah, I'm, we are uh, decoupling the mechanical consideration for the, from the, uh, from the fabrication consideration. Right. Just that fabrication here. 
But as we are uh, proposing a framework that can apply to any uh, any surface, uh, like really the like the, the mechanical consideration would be taken into account in choosing uh, a reference surface that is uh, aware of the this form found. Okay. Thank you very much. But generally, what happens is that uh, you you generally have a, a, a grid of beams, even if torsion or in, a, in the right geometrical. Uh, uh form initial form and uh maybe they were thinking also in application in, in which you want to uh mount panels between the the, the holes that uh, are made from the the optimized geometrical grid yeah that would be a next thing to look at if you want to put uh to put panels like right now if you want to use uh for example um, etfe cladding then there's no constraint on planarity so this can be applied readily then if you want to uh, add on the top the constraint of having, uh, like, for example, planar, uh, planar panels on the top, yeah, then you will need to add uh, a layer of constraints to, the, to, the, to this discussion and uh, probably have quite fewer patterns fulfilling this rule. Like, uh, like, but this is something that is usually done together in the literature. People who are looking all together, especially people from the computer graphics, they were considering uh, not all the constraint of having no torsion at nodes and phase planarity together, which gave them like very few solutions that fulfill it. Whereas here, we are just looking at uh, torsion alone because yeah, planarity is not always necessary on, on a curved facade. Okay, thank you again, Xavier.